For instance, uh, to show you how the stories in the New Testament about Jesus is a symbolic story uh, that's explaining to you in your human life on this earth is a war going on inside of you and on the earth too because you're part of the earth. So there's a war going on on this earth of which you are part of it and so the same war is also, the Apostle Paul says, is going on in you. And so the war is the war between light and darkness, between intellectual and, and spiritual enlightenment uh, based on intelligence and wisdom, enlightenment or the light of the world, as opposed to the devil, which is the, the D in front of the word evil, which is the prince of darkness. And so the prince of darkness was set, as I said, and so it does get dark at sunset. And so uh, a classic example of a metaphor is uh, we're told that Jesus uh, was arrested by the authorities uh, they came to look for Jesus. Uh, the, uh, the the Roman authorities uh, came into the little city, the little town, uh, and they were looking for Jesus to arrest him. And we know that uh, that, that little town uh, was so small, it's not like the Chicago or, or, or New York. It was just a little tiny little town in in the uh, in the Middle East, where Jesus was supposedly uh, sitting in the garden uh, by himself, and so it says that uh, uh, one of the twelve apostles was named Judas. From where we get the you know we get the idea that Judas was a uh, a traitor. To uh, he turned his uh, his his uh, master in and became a traitor and ended up committing suicide because he couldn't live with himself for what he did. And so the story is is that when the soldiers came in looking to arrest Jesus uh, at the at the uh, at the you know the, at the behest of the Jewish uh, rabbis, they wanted him to be arrested and put in jail and ultimately to kill him if he could. And so they couldn't do that, but the Romans could. And so the Romans came in to arrest Jesus. And um, But the scripture says um, that they, uh, they had a man named Jesus, one of the 12 apostles. And he came out and with the military, um, with the, uh, with the uh, authorities, and he went out and, uh, and kissed Jesus. And, and, and so that's a very famous story about Judas kissing Jesus. And so you'll say, well, why, why did Judas, uh, a grown man, go out and kiss Jesus? And so the Christians will tell you, well, that was to identify him. Well, first of all, that makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, supposedly Jesus was known all over the Middle East. He was known everywhere. Any man that's raising the sick and, I mean, raising the dead and healing the sick and performing miracles, even right. Caesar in Rome knew where he was. And so why would the military coming to arrest him need Judas to go out and kiss him? Uh, well, now we know that it was a metaphor because, um, uh, and, and the 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 sun, uh, S U N, is really the hottest it will ever be. Is in the northern hemisphere on the first day of summer. So the first day of summer in our northern hemisphere, uh, it, it, the sun is directly overhead, and it's not going any further north. So it's directly overhead, and it's full blast on us in the northern hemisphere. And it's really hot in the summer, and especially in the Middle East. And so the constellation that is associated with the uh, with uh, the summer was a lion, Leo, the constellation of Leo, the lion. And so, therefore, the uh, Leo, the lion, becomes the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm. 
the land of the tribe of Judah as simply the constellation of Leo that's associated with uh, with summer. Well, as I said, the sun is really hot uh, on the first day of summer, but uh, thirty uh, but ninety degrees around the calendar, around the circle, like your watch is a round circle with the twelve equal uh, members, the twelve signs of the zodiac, or the twelve numbers. Well, if you go one quarter around the circle, uh, that's 30 days for each month, and that's three months, and we call that summer. But then on the fourth, the beginning of the fourth month, now he's, he's no longer Leo the lion. He was really hot, but now he's not that hot. We call him, we say that he has fallen and so we call the beginning of, uh, of uh, the next uh, uh, three months, we call it fall because the sun was really hot and now he's falling. And why, in what way is he falling? Well, he's falling southward. He was directly overhead. Now he's halfway down uh, going south. And so he's fallen. And so now from the time he starts to fall, which is in the fall or the autumn, uh, uh, another 90 degrees or 90 days, uh, and he finally falls all the way down south. So he it dies to us here in the northern hemisphere. It is now winter, December, January, and February is freezing right. cold. It's, it's ice and snow everywhere. So God's sun is dead for us in the northern hemisphere. The sun is gone. He's dead. But, uh, but, uh, and so therefore he dies on the first day of, uh, of the autumn equinox, which is, I mean, on the winter equinox, which is December 22nd. Mm. And so now he was the lion of the tribe of Judah, first day of summer. Then 90 days later, or, uh, or, or three months later, he's now fallen. And so what is this, uh, the, the, the uh, astrological symbol uh, associated with the fall, with the autumn? And that is uh, the constellation of the um, Scorpio. Scorpion. Hmm. The scorpion is a constellation of the zodiac that's associated with the beginning of fall. And so the scorpion uh, is a backbiter. Well, that's what we call people who are traitors to you and who who you think are your friends. And one day they turn you in or turn against you or lie to you or cheat you. And then you find out they uh, you know, they weren't your friend. And so, uh, so they, the Scorpio represents Judas. Right. Judas was a Scorpio because he was a backbiter. And so, uh, when a scorpion in the Middle East, uh, hits you, when, when you've been, uh, bitten by a, uh, a scorpion in the Middle East, it has two cuts on your skin. Uh, that upper and lower cut that's left on your skin when you've been bitten by a scorpion. And, and the two cuts are look exactly like uh, two lips. This is exactly what they look like. So when you've been uh, hit by a scorpion, it looks like someone has given you a kiss of death. That's why the mob has the, has the story of, you know, they're going to kill you. They give you the kiss of death. And so they're going to kiss you off. <laughs> and so that's what uh, Judas now represents Scorpio, the constellation of Scorpio, who's going to kiss Jesus off. Now he's going to die. When, where is he going to die? He's going to die down in Capricorn. Mm. Uh, you know, three months later, he's going to die down south. And when he dies down south on December 22nd, and and the sun rises on its on the lowest uh, the lowest uh, angle uh, is in the the first day of, of uh, December twenty second starts the winter official winter, mm. 
And so when the sun comes up down down in Rio, down in South, in South America, it comes up on a particular degree. It rises down there on a particular degree. And that's on December 22nd, the official first day of winter. Mm. And the next two days, the 2nd and the 3rd, December uh, uh, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, for three days the sun uh, does not go any further south and it doesn't start coming back northward either. So the ancient people said the sun was moving every day, one degree and one day at a time, until it finally hit the lowest point in the sky, which was December 22nd. But it rose, uh, and the U.S. Navy can show you how that's, uh, the, you know, with their instruments, that the sun rises down there in Rio, down in South America. It rises on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th on the same identical degree. It doesn't go any further south, and it doesn't come back north. So the ancient people said the sun, God's sun, uh, died for three days because he's not moving at all. So he's dead for three days. But then on December 25th, the sun actually moves and rises on one degree northward. Mm. And so the U.S. Navy can show you with their instruments that the sun actually moved one degree northward. Well, if it hasn't moved for three days and it was dead, it is now born again. It's now coming back to life. Right. Now, for the next three months, January, uh, December, January, and February, and now it begins to come back, and it's going. it started on December 25th. It moved one degree northward. And so for the next three months, it's going to move one degree every day northward. And so the ancient Egyptians realized and the ancient peoples realized that the sun is now on his way coming back to us in the northern hemisphere. And so he's been dead for, for you know, three days, but he's born again. Now he's coming back to us. And so the very first week of what we call spring, and so in spring the, the, the sun has crossed over the equator to officially start its journey back to the northern hemisphere again. And so the ancient Egyptians said the sun, when it crosses over the equator, begins the, the annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. And so he was dead in winter, but now he's going to spring back to life. And so they called it spring because he's springing back to life. And so, but the Egyptians said that when the sun crossed over the equator, uh, that was the official day when spring begins. And so, therefore, they called it the Passover because the sun has officially passed over the equator. And now it's going to come back in thirty and in, in ninety days again. It's going to come back to summer, and he will then begin all over again. Uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and then Judas, representing fall, will give him the kiss of death, and he will go down further and die on December twenty second, and rise on the horizon down there in the south. 20, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. But on the 25th, it now begins to move one degree uh, northward. That means he's uh, born again, and he's coming back to the northern hemisphere. Hmm. As he passes over the equator, the ancient Egyptians called it the Passover. And so today we have the Jews celebrating the Passover, never realizing, no, it's the sun has passed over the equator, bringing you spring. And spring, the constellation uh, associated with spring, was Virgo, the virgin. Mm -hmm. So the sun is now coming back to life in the northern hemisphere with its mother, the Virgo, the virgin. So he has a, 
His mother is a virgin. No, it's the constellation of Virgo that begins spring. Right. Now he's coming back to be lion. Of so the whole story of Jesus being the lion of the tribe of Judah and how he dies and for three days he's resurrected and comes back to life and his mother was a virgin and uh, and so the whole thing was just a story of the trip the son makes every year starting with the summer and coming back around to summer again so it's the trip around the watch it's the trip around the 12 signs 